How's it going? It's Peter Cox here. I'm in on in Turk Island in County Mayo. I'm at the very western end of it right now, which is a place called Dremore Head. And I'm just thought I'd make this movie because I'm very impressed by something in particular. Um, I'm shooting with this Sony Alpha 7 r II, uh, which is quite light and it's a bit of a walk to get out to where I am. So it's quite useful to uh, have something quite not too heavy to bring out and it has this really impressive feature uh, which, is, which is new it's an application that you have to buy and it's relatively expensive for an application but considering what it does I think it's worth every penny and it's the um, graduated filter or digital filter is the name of the application but what it allows you to do is basically do an in-camera graduated filter where the camera will actually expose different parts of the sensor differently and you have a lot of freedom as to how you can go about this uh, so I'm going to just show you how this works here. I'm going to stop. So the camera is set up. I'm looking at this uh, cliff here, which is actually Dromore Head itself. And then the sun is going to be going down very, very shortly. But I just want to show you the back of the camera here. And you can see that I have a graduated filter defined here. And I've done this. Yes, there we go. It's a little bit fiddly to use. But basically, I can define my filter here, and at the moment you can have either two or three areas, right? So you can basically have two graduated filters, one on top of the other, other oriented individually. Uh, I can change the, uh, the boundary position so I can move the filter up. You can see it moving there, and you can see the effect changing with it. Now, there is no filter on the lens. In fact, I cannot have a filter on this lens. It's a 14 millimeter Samyang lens that has a bulbous front element. I can't actually filter it. So this is a real boon, but actually I would use this even for lenses that I can filter. So once I'm happy with the position, I press enter. I can change the uh, how hard or soft the filtration is, and you can see a live preview there. And then I'm shooting manual here with a, and the lens is a manual, um, uh, it's a manual aperture lens. So that's why I'm getting the flashing on the, uh, on the aperture there. But here, I define the shutter speed of the secondary, which is the, uh, it's indicated by the arrow pointing here, which is the secondary. So the secondary is the top part. And I can just change this by rotating like that until I get, and you can see there's a histogram there that's moving. The orange histogram is the top area. And it will actually show me when I, well, okay, it doesn't show me a overexposure warning on the sun. The sun is overexposed here, but that's a reasonable, so that's a 50th of a second on top, and then I press down, and it'll change to the shutter speed of the first area, which is was a 13th of a second, and I can darken it or lighten it as needs be. Um, so let's say that I like that. I can set the ISO as well on the white balance, but I'm going to just go ahead and take the picture. And the camera will actually make two exposures. It's going to count down the self-timer. There's the first exposure. And then it's going to adjust the exposure again and expose a second time. And then it gives me, once it finishes processing, there is the image and I can either adjust and try again or save. I will save. Um, it's now saving that. And I'm going to hit play. And there's my image. You can see I have overexposed around the sun. You can. Um, it's a little bit of an awkward image for any graduated filter because we do have this cliff standing up in the in the middle, but I think it's a pretty good. Uh, it's it's actually pretty excellent. Um, you know, the cliff is going to be darkened by the filter, but I can of course uh, lighten that up in post processing and uh, and make it, make it match the rest of the mountain. Um, it's just an incredibly useful, incredibly. Um, it's a really a lifesaver is what it is, uh, for especially for lenses like this that cannot be filtered. So once again, it's the digital filter. You can get it through the, um, the application store on the camera itself, uh, and it costs 30 euro. Um, so I do highly recommend it. One thing that I should mention is that the resulting image from this is not a JPEG. Uh, this is what I thought it was going to be originally, and it sort of put me off the whole idea. But actually, it is a raw file that you get at the end of this. So you can do everything you can do to a normal RAW file um, with this sort of double exposure filtered image. So that's what makes it so special. 
I hope that was useful to you. Um, let me see if I can... There we go, that's a little bit better. Uh, I hope that was useful to you, and uh, I'm going to go out and actually, you know, make some photographs of the sunset here uh, while it's still happening. So enjoy and stay tuned for further things like this.